these for a long time. Just a regular takedown bow saw to everybody else, but I guess I'm pretty proud of it because I just built it this afternoon. We'll get to that in a second. I'm sitting out in my shed right now at a regular strike anywhere match. Give you an idea how warm the wood stove is cooking. Just touch it to the top of the stove and it lights right off. Actually, this board on here, um, I've got a piece of tin down here to reflect the heat away from this bench so that I don't have to worry about stuff, but the board on top of it is off of an old pallet, I think, and it's got some creosote in it. It's warm enough along the edges that creosote is starting to leach out. It's pretty nasty stuff, so keep an eye on that one for a while. Uh, the shed around me is my pallet shed. Uh, all the walls are framed out of pallets. Uh, it hasn't been insulated yet, but I can, you can see I've brought a lot of my stuff out to hang up, my hunting stuff, my backpacks. Basically, all my hunting, camping, hiking, backpacking stuff's all going to go in this shed. Uh, the inside of it's a 10 by 12 footprint with a 4 foot loft hanging over the front uh, to make a covered porch and another 4, four foot loft above me as well that uh, is set up to be a sleeping loft. I've got a ladder, step ladder that I built that goes right up to it, can be taken down, turned around, and put up to the other loft so you can get up there for storage. But the main purpose for today's video is this takedown bow saw. So I've seen a lot of different designs um, that I like and some that I don't, and the big thing that I wanted was to be able to keep as much of it connected to the one piece as I could. So it's got a standard 21 inch bow saw blade, um, it's got bale connectors here that come in and out, that snap on and snap off, that are tied on on either side so that I don't lose them. Um, the string at the top is just paracord doubled over um, and it's connected to uh, carriage bolts, quarter 20 carriage bolts with nylock nuts here and here so they won't come off. So if you've got to restring it, yeah it may be a little bit finicky but you really shouldn't have to restring it. Um, it does not in this configuration with this permanently attached, it does not allow you to sleeve everything inside of it to slip it in your backpack. If you undo the paracord, it will allow you to do that. So, it, eh, the center part bar probably doesn't fit. I suppose I should have tested it before I said that. So this is set up. Uh, it's a piece of half inch aluminum tube in the center, piece of one inch, uh, inch and a quarter aluminum tubes on the ends, um, and like I said, two bail connectors two quarter twenty carriage bolts and lock nuts and one piece of paracord. So if I allow this to unwrap without beating the snot out of me, I have this tied with uh, a two fisherman's knots here and what that allows is when I'm setting it up if I need to, you know, you, sometimes you watch guys kind of finick you're a little finicky and kind of hassle with holding this piece in the center in place because it's the string stretches out too far. What those fisherman knots allow is you can slide it down to tighten and loosen it until you're ready to actually really tighten it. So that piece comes disconnected, but it's big enough that you're not going to lose it. So now then for your bail connectors, they just pop out, pull through. The blade slides out of the slot that it's in, come down to the other side and do the same. Again, the blade's not permanently connected, but it's big enough that you shouldn't lose it. So the bail connectors, though, and the nuts and bolts, they could be lost, so they're all tied together. Even at its loosest setting, though, what I was hoping is I would be able to make that loose enough to have this go end to end. You can see it's just a few inches shy of that. So what I could do now is untie my knots here and then have it loose enough. Kids in the neighborhood still playing outside. It's 20 degrees out, 25, 30 degrees outside and kids are playing outside. No snow on the ground to speak of. But you can hear them good. Kids yelling and screaming. They're not even mine. So if I untie these though, and that's one of the good things about fisherman knots is they're generally not horribly hard to untie.
depending upon how tight you've made them and used them. Then once untied, you don't even have to unstring it all the way. I'm just going to put a half hitch in here so that I don't lose it on both ends. Just half hitch it back on itself is all. Just like that double fisherman's was before, this is just going to be a single, man, single fisherman's basically. And that allows it to loosen up even further. I'm not losing anything that way. And now they can go end to end. my pieces that I lost, a little work, I should be able to fight you down in there, yep, there you go, and then that end come over as a cap. Now, the only complaint that I can foresee ever having about that is because of the way that things line up in there and how full it are, it is, I can't put my pins back through it. But they're tied on, so it really doesn't matter. What I can do though, is I can just clip them around it and let them hang. And even this one, because of the extra length I've got, it won't slip around that bolt. So, what I can do with this whole thing now just wrap it around. Just like that. Slip that down in one of those bale latches. And yeah, I'm 32 inches long, so I'm a little longer than most of the, than some of the others that are out there. But I've got eight inches of space in between my bow and my support rail. So I've got a lot more room in there to cut larger diameter logs. So uh, if you bear with me for a minute, I'm going to open the door a little more, and I will uh, reset the camera a little bit, set this back up, and I'm going to grab a piece of white oak and uh, see how well we tear through it. Okay, so what I've got is a piece of white oak. Uh, it's been seasoning for a year and a half, two years. Um, that's going to be about six inches across, probably two and a half inches from the center up at that end, and it's not much bigger than that where I'm going to cut it. Um, for most wood stoves, this would be just about the perfect size. But I've got a pot belly stove. Let's see if I can swing over here to it a little bit more. And the firebox on it is a little difficult to keep stuff down in the bottom of it. So I've got to cut them down to about six or eight inch logs to really get them to fit well. So we'll chop into this, see how long it takes and how well it does. The blade is just a standard home and garden store type blade. Uh, I picked up at a local store for $4.99. So let's get it. pieces of aluminum tubing were about seven bucks a piece. Paracord I had laying around. You know, I used stainless quarter 20s. Could have saved a bunch and not used stainless. I actually had the bale clips laying around. So all together, if I had to buy the extra pieces, let's call it 14, probably 18 dollars plus the 499 blade, but I can replace it with any other 21 inch saw blade out there. So that's my takedown aluminum bow saw. Thanks for watching.